Hong Kong superstar Andy Lau is wondering if he can follow in the footsteps of Michelle Yeoh and Tony Leung in becoming a star in America. But I guess the question is, does Hollywood want him? Yeah, I can hear the aunties talking right now. Anyways, guys, uh, this this video is obviously for people who are familiar with the Hong Kong movie industry and especially Andy Lau. Shout out to him. But uh, we're going to talk about it. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we discuss his possible career opportunities in America, in Hollywood. And by the way, guys, our understanding of HK Cinema and entertainment is not 10 out of 10, but we know something, Yeah, okay? so leave your comments down below if you know more about this situation. Real quick, Andrew, something else that's transitioning from the East to the West is Smala, smalasauce.com right now. Get it? It's part Sichuan, part Sicily. A real truffle in there, unlike anything available on the market right now. Goes delicious on dim sum. Like, we, I eat it with dim sum all the time. All the different dim sum dishes... It's delicious, guys. Made in America. Check it out, smallasauce.com. Um, Andrew, his quote at the Toronto Film Festival was, I'm prepared to enter Hollywood, but is Hollywood ready for me? That's kind of a funny thing to ask. Like, is Hollywood going to pick me? Going to let me enter it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess so. A lot of people are like, yo, Andy Lau, technically of the big Hong Kong superstars, he'd be up next. Jackie Chan broke first. Obviously, huge, global, massive star. Michelle Yeoh won an Oscar for Best Actress. But, but before that, she was in a Bond movie. Right, yeah, so she's been in America. Jet Li came. Jet Li. Uh, Chow Young fat Chow Young fat Andrew, uh, Jackie Chan's homie from training day, training school days, uh, Sammo Hung was yeah. even in America. That's true. Sammo Hung had his own TV show, uh... And then Martial if, Law, we used yeah. to watch that. And then, so then, uh, yeah, Chow Young fat actually had a couple movies in America. He had, uh... Uh, the Corrupter, and then like one other one. Replacement Killers. Yeah, Replacement Killers. Um, and then, so I guess Andy Lau is like the next one up. Yeah, and you know, Andy Lau is probably thinking, you know, I was one of the main characters in Infernal Affairs. Infernal Affairs, that became The Departed. The Departed, they just put Leo and then Jack Nicholson, and it became an Oscar winner. Well, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Lau. I thought you were busy being a pop star in Hong Kong. You know, you seem to really enjoy it. So we we just kind of let you do your thing. Um, What's the major difference between the perception of him and Tony Leung, who recently was in Shang-Chi, though? Yeah, so Tony Leung, he had won a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Venice Film Festival. He's very, Tony Leung is very well respected amongst hipsters around the globe. Right, because of the stuff with Wong Kar Wai, right? Yeah. All the moody, moody and, cinematography. And I do think that that uh, he is probably technically a better actor than Andy Lau. Mm -hmm. He's known to act with his eyes. He has that romantic flair to him. He has that hipster appeal. He has that Brooklyn appeal. Like literally, right. like people who don't even like maybe eat Chinese food, or maybe may or may not like know who Tony Leung is because yeah. they respect the movies. I, I would say Andy Lau. It's hard to describe who we would be in America, but it's almost like. A I don't know. Like, I was going to say a Harrison Ford or almost like a Tom Cruise type situation where they're a major big actor that gets a lot of money, but they just never had the hipster cred or like the super artsy credibility. Yeah, they're kind of in those normal movies, like action movies a lot, kind of just like general thrillers, things that are not going to yeah. win him a Best Actor award. Yeah, well, in the 1980s, Andrew, when Andy Lau debuted, I guess he was more known as just a good-looking guy, but mm. he sort of got himself to be a decent singer and an above-average uh, actor, but he was never known like for his like pure technical talent. It was right. more for his looks. Yeah, I don't even know if his music, I mean, I, he has a couple hits, but like as far as his music, he's probably not known for being the most talented singer either. No, no, I wouldn't say so, to be honest. Definitely not. It's more for the aunties. Um, there may be another aspect, Andrew. I feel like some of these older Hong Kong stars that were in Beijing making movies for a while, that system has tightened up on censorship over the last five or six mm. years. They may be more thinking about like, oh, you know, I don't know if I want to just keep Going over there, they might have another yeah. lockdown. You know, we got to go to L.A. Yeah, no, I, I understand, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Also, Daniel Wu made it over from Hong Kong. Well, he's from America, went to Hong Kong, made it, came back right. to America and made it. So I think, like, he's looking at everybody. And I understand. I understand. I think Andy Lau is right in asking the questions, yo, when am I going to get my chance at Hollywood and see if I can actually, like, cross over now. Right, but realistically, Andrew, he's not going to have the same range of roles available to him because, uh, 
obviously, you know what I mean? In Hollywood, they're going to have a completely different set of archetypes that he's able to play. What right. do you think he could play? All right, so my prediction for Andy Lau, knowing kind of like that Asian talent pool of Hollywood, I think he can play a really, really good Chinese billionaire villain. Now, that's a character that's going to pop up in the future. And actually, Andy Lau just recently said he is more willing to play the villain. Like, he wants to. Yeah. And I think he can. Right. He For a has, while, he, would, he, didn't, he was more like Tom Cruise. He always wants to be the good guy. In Hong Kong. Listen, because he's a pop star and stuff like that. But I think he's got... If he wants to come to America, he's going to have to play like this evil Steve Jobs. Like, look at these pictures. He totally fits maybe an evil Elon Musk. And of course, I'm saying evil because it's probably going to be a Western movie. And therefore, he's going to be, you know, on the... On the antagonist side yeah. i think he can also play on the comedic side a eccentric washed up pop star which is like i'm not saying that's what he is but based on these pictures he could play like the hong kong jyp but in a comedic way yeah. i think that would be a funny character i could see some like almost like nicholas cage type yeah. thing like an ex-pop star who gets recruited to do go on some international spy mission yeah. or something like, like that trust me i am the international star from hong kong i am going to save the world and then everybody's like hold on dude what is this who is this guy would you guys get this guy from yeah uh, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below what roles can andy lau realistically play yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, they have to be available within the Hollywood pool. One thing I don't think he's going to be playing anytime soon is just the regular average Asian dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I think his grasp of English out of everybody that transitioned over from Hong Kong. And by the way, I know that Michelle Yeoh is from Malaysia originally. But like, his English might be the worst. Ooh, and yeah. he can speak English, but he, it's very it sounds very flat. It's difficult to emote. And so... <laughs> Anyway, guys, best of luck to Andy Lau. Let us know what you guys think. But, Andrew, real quick, we got to grade everybody else who transitioned over from Hong Kong to America and sort of, like, give just to give a quick breakdown of their journey, Andrew. Jackie Chan, nothing needs more to be said, Andrew. I gave him an A+. Yeah. I think he got typecasted a little bit, but really... He sort of typecast himself, if anything, right? Yeah, I mean, he was already playing a lot of those roles. He's the probably, to me, Jackie Chan is the number one, probably greatest movie entertainer, at least physical entertainer but, of all time. But his, it's true that in his uh, Western roles, his sex appeal was sort of eliminated. Yeah, I feel like he wasn't, uh, yeah, but he, was, he wasn't the sexiest dude in Asia either. You right. know, I yeah, mean, like that's true. I mean, he moved from like a four, like a five out of ten sexy to like a two out of ten sexy. But it wasn't. He wasn't like a ten out of ten heartthrob. All right, Michelle Yeoh, like we said, originally from Malaysia, but got big in Hong Kong. And then Hong Kong transitioned to Hollywood. Andrew, I'm gonna give her a plus for results, but I kind of feel like a little bit like. I don't know if people in Hollywood, first of all, of course we got love for Michelle Yeoh, but I'm saying people in Hollywood, I don't know if they truly love her. You know what I mean? Because she's only been in a few American things, but obviously they were all, uh, you know, massive hits recently since CRA. And then, of course, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, Andrew, what are you going to give Tony Leung for recently being in Shang-Chi? So, I mean, Shang-Chi, but also with the Wong Kar Wai films that he was in, he gets Western points for that. Well, because they crossed over, even though yeah. they were not intended to be Western films. Yeah, but Shang-Chi, it is, like, I guess his biggest American movie that he's ever in. So I would give him... Going from Hong Kong to America, I'd only give it a B or B plus. I think he actually has a ways to go. He can yeah. he has one more level up for I, sure. I, 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 think I would actually give it a B minus right now. I'm like his journey so far because I think he's gonna, but I think he's rising up. Andrew Chow Young Fat, he uh, basically mm. entered the game. Duelies, he had dual pistols. He was in a bunch of John yeah. Woo movies. We're talking about the replacement killers, the corrupter, but he also had a acting acting role in Anna and the King, mm. where he was actually playing uh, the romantic. Uh, interest of Jodie Foster. Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that he's kind of respected in the West a little bit. I'd give him a B because I think that he had his moment. Now, maybe he didn't see a level up from then because his moment was in, like, the early 2000s, essentially. Right, right, right. So, I guess, like... He didn't really keep going after that. He kind of yeah. went back in yeah, a way. That's true. A, a lot of rappers still reference John Woo movies, though. So, I, I'm a fan. You know, you know. I think his biggest mistake was turning down the role of Morpheus. That was originally supposed to go to Chow Young Fat before That's Lawrence crazy. Fishburne. That's crazy. That would have been interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of worked out with, with Lawrence Fishburne, though, but... Uh, you got Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen was, I believe, born in Hong Kong, raised in Boston, went back to Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, and came back. I, I'd say, he listen, he was a Jedi. He was just John Woo. He might get his own John Woo spinoff. Uh, what did I say? John, John Wick. John Wick spinoff. Um, people know Donnie Yen. I mean, as a martial artist, I'd give him an A-. minus. I think he actually has... A little bit more juice to go, but essentially, I mean, people know him. 
Right, right, right. I mean, it's difficult to rank some of these guys that are like 10 out of 10 in martial arts skill, right? Because Chow Young Fat and Andy Lau, they don't fight. Right, so right. that Th- does These hinder. guys are not trained fighters, but right, right. some of these, a lot of these guys, like Jet Li, a lot of people, uh, I, I guess you could guess, Andrew, Jet Li used to win national championships for Wushu in China before he became a movie star. Yeah. Moving on to Jet Li, I mean, he's this is like a hardcore martial artist. I would give his career a solid B+. Plus. In America? I give it an A. You give it an A? Yeah, because he I had just multiple. Think, but I, I have, I, I thought his his peak could have even been higher. Right, considering his level of English, because you know Jet Li's English is not amazing. Right. I would give it an A though, because he has had multiple movies to himself, and everybody knows Jet Li. That's true. It's really Jet Li. It's Jackie Chan, Jet Li, as far as name recognition, and then it goes Donnie Yen as far as uh, martial arts. Jay Z did shout out Jet Li before. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, he came in, what, Lethal Weapon 4? You know, he had the kiss with Aaliyah that got cut out. He was in Ocean's Eleven's uh, series, The Expendables, the stuff one. like that. He had the whole movie, The One. Hero was actually still, even though that's a movie from China, that was big over here. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and moving on to Sam Hung. Sam Hung is actually an interesting one because he never really got into movies in America, but then he had his own TV show. And I thought martial law, what it went for a few seasons, it wasn't like a crazy successful show but it had kelly who in it uh most notably she went on to have a career after that i thought i thought samuel was good it's just his english was like and, and they're not, not gonna put a guy enough. that i guess well, like fat or like schlubby looking in a way yeah even but though it, that was part of his thing and it was so hilarious in hong kong yeah. did he walk so uh what's his name benton wong could run the guy who's in marvel right now oh uh yeah yeah, 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 it's possible. They're this, uh, the same, yeah, yeah. somewhat of the same architect. I, I'm I would, not, the other guy's more Genghis Khan. I'd, I'd actually give Samuel Hung's career in the West an A minus. Okay, he had his own TV show. That's true. Not That's bad. True. Shout out to martial law, and he can't speak English that well. So you got to give him credit because it's like he still had a career and he didn't like. And he was yeah. repping for the big boys. Yeah, man. he was repping for the chunky. And boys. he could move. He could move at his yeah. size too. Like he said, uh, actually was trained at the same academy as Jackie Chan in Hong yeah. Kong. Um, Andrew Daniel Wu. Daniel Wu, shout out to Daniel Wu, a friend of ours. uh, Chinese-American, born in the Bay Area, went to Hong Kong, had a career in China and Hong Kong, and then came back. Uh, He did uh, Into the Badlands, most notably, and then I think he's working on some other movies out in America right now. I I give it, his transition got to get like a B right now, but it has a chance to go up. I I think it's an A-. minus. Okay. I think it's an A-. minus. I think he's got a couple more movies, um, but I thought he's done pretty well overall. Yeah. I got high expectations. People know Daniel Wu, though. Yeah. They know him. They know the name. Okay. Do they? Anyways, guys, uh, David, what's your overall takeaway as far as Andy Lau? I mean, as far as Andy Lau goes, I don't know. I'm sure he would never vocalize this. He's probably thought about the complexities of how he's going to get typecast as an Asian guy. Um, everybody knows the cards that the Asian guys have coming over are completely different. By the way, I'm not going to discount the fact that Michelle Yeoh is actually a native English speaker because she grew up in colonial Malaysia. It helps. It like, helps. Like even more English speaker than any of these HK guys. Right, right, right. Yeah, HK is more part, you know, closer to China. So it's like, it's tough to say, but it's like, it's going to be tough to expect outside of the indie route. Uh-huh. There's like no other way in. It's almost like you get the indie respect and then you can break into Hollywood. Mm, I think I think Andy Lau has a chance, man. I think that between playing kind of like the Chinese tech billionaire, like the Chinese Steve Jobs, or playing, he could play in a Bond movie. He looks amazing in a suit. He's really cool looking. Well, he looks kind of like a elf, but like a more masculine. Yeah, elf, he could yeah. be. He could be in a Bond movie. He can kind of fight. I mean, he's trained for long enough. You know, I think Andy Lau could do something. I don't know what it's going to be, but here's the thing about coming from a different world and you're being a huge star out there. There is some humbling experiences coming over and transitioning. You're, you're talking about the media not knowing who no, you are. No, but even is he going to audition? Are you going to have Andy Lau audition? Maybe you kind of have to have him audition against maybe some other that looking at the Asian male acting pool as it is, depending on the right, role. You're saying you might have to have him audition against BD Wong or something like that. And he possibly might, and he may not accept that. Yeah. And, and that's like, you know, un- also understandable from his perspective because he's a gigantic star. So I guess if he's willing to humble himself, I think he has a shot. But I do think he's going to have to come over kind of a, a, a little bit with that. That immigrant mindset, unless he lines up an opportunity kind of like a Shang-Chi, which is such a heavily Chinese movie, but made from an American company. Right, where he's almost leveraging his fame in the East 
to yeah. to skip the line, yeah. skip the Hollywood line, perhaps. I mean, listen, Andy Lau. I mean, listen, he's the next Hong Kong star up, so I think he's got a chance. You guys, he let me never know got the, a shot yet. Nah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Are we missing something? I know he just had a couple recent new movies, but I see his movies on Netflix sometimes, like the Firestorm Three. Honestly, I'm not super interested in that one. <laughs> I, I don't know if the pop singing is going to transition to the Western world, though. Yo, he looks like he's having fun, though, with the pop song. Bro, he's still... It's ah! kind of like Robin Thicke mis mixed, but, but sonically more Rosalie. like David. It, it sounds more like David Hasselhoff to me. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Always encourage the debate. What are the pros? What are the cons? Is it likely to happen or not? Until next time, we're going to hop up, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.